Greetings there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign. It says in Kaiserreich, which is partially true, but we are using the Home of the Brave beta mod for this campaign. So what it does is that Home of the Brave mod uses Kaiserreich, but splits up America even into a few more different sub-nations during the American Civil War. Recommendations, the Home of the Brave adds new content. If you'd like to read about recommendations, go right ahead. Of course, we want... Uh, basically, the Ottoman Empire to annex Armenia, Denmark, Mongolia, and Argentina annex other places, and the beta, if you'd like to read about that. So, as you can tell, this is using Kaiserak Beta 0.13.2. Let's go ahead and begin as immediately. So, here's the focus tree with Home of the Brave. It's kind of large. We've got Beacon of Democracy with MacArthur. Uh, let's see, we've got the U.S. Navy, of course. We've got quota adjustments. Civil War avoided? Can we actually avoid the Civil War? Mexican repatriation? Immigrant Immigration Act reformed. Cool. We also have back in business when we get there. And actually, we have still three things over there. So basically, Home of the Brave mod expands what the Civil War could be like. And American Army reform debate. Oh my goodness. There's a whole lot here. But we're going to just begin with something normal and tried and true. The War Department expansion. The U.S. States, the U.S. War Department has seen a shrinkage over the last half decade through austerity measures. Now it is vital that staffing be expanded and innovators enter the department ready for reform. Great! Look at the status of the U.S. Army. We have five divisions like normal Kaiserreich. We have four slots. And because I want to go down a certain way, as you might be able to tell from the title, we got to go down a certain path to go the way we want to go. And let's go ahead and grab some... Military police, maybe good hospitals. What do we want? I don't know. We'll grab this to make it easy on us. Cool. So I'm gonna actually do something I do differently um, when we play Kaiserreich. I want to build infrastructure, especially in this part of the country, where <clears throat> we might, we may have some uh, questionable loyalties at best regarding the rest of the nation. But the southeast of America can never go wrong, right? So we start with guns, artillery, fighters, close air support bombers. I don't believe in right now. Naval bombers, we don't believe in those either for right now. Let's get some carrier fighters, as well as some carrier naval bombers. And, let's see, we got the one, two, three, four, not bad. Anything else we need? Support equipment and motorized. Thank you very much. Tanks, we can throw some tanks on there. And throw on a lot of guns. Honestly, dockyards, doesn't even matter. Because where we're going, we're not going to play as a USA. Cool, cool, cool. Let's let time go on. We're not even going to make any divisions. Let's go. Uh, just because where we're headed... Okay, so the United States in 1936. In 36, the U.S. has is gripped by unrelenting crisis. Relieved it had managed to avoid the horrors of the Veld Creek, Woodrow Wilson was the first U.S. president to run and win a third term as a man who kept the peace, alongside his new running mate, former Attorney General Alexander Pitchell Palmer. This vi political victory was short-lived, however, as Wilson suffered a stroke shortly after his election, setting off a constitutional crisis and struggle for power in the cabin until Wilson died in late 1923. Until then, Wilson... Uh, Palmer and the cabinet re reacted to the French and British revolutions and growth of American cynicalism with increasingly extreme crackdowns on union organization and eventually a slew of organizations suspected to have connections to the radical left. As the workers became increasingly radicalized and anarchist, bombers made several attempts on Palmer's life. The political situation deteriorated alongside the economy due to a combination of strikes, political instability, and a loss of trading partners. Palmer's own controversial presidency ended with the election of Herbert Hoover in 1928, who attempted to calm the situation with a return to normalcy, legalizing non-violent syndicalist outlets. This ultimately did little to help as the accumulation, accumulation of speculative investing sent the U.S. spiraling to the 1929 Great Pandemic, or Great Panic, and allowed the Berlin stock market to take its place as the foremost of the world's economy. The election of Herbert Hoover in 28, while initially promising, failed to reserve the, reverse the decline of the American economy, and the Great ba Panic had created one of the worst financial crises it had ever seen. As a view of the rise of radical politics in America, such as the far-left Socialist Party of America, the populist share of the Wealth Society under Huey Long and his National America First Party, and the far-right Old Democratic Party, which places the blame of the syndicalists and civil rights uprisings at the feet of immigrants, Republican cosmetop cosmopolitanism, and liberal toleration of the left. Hoover's contentious re-election through the House of Representatives in 1932 and the ongoing Great Depression means that these problems are unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. Many throughout the country fear the upheaval that would result should one of the extreme parties come to power or should have the Depression, or should the Depression continue unabated. God save America, here we go. So, as you can tell from the length of this video, that's quite a long video because I want to get to the Civil War by the beginning of the next episode. Kornilov storms Moscow. Oh, look at that. Voting rights and legation council.
The legation cities are formed in 1928 as a result of our intervention in the Zeelis Feng Xin conflict that was soon going to spill into open war between the two other powers in the Far East, Japan and Germany. While we obviously wish to end the conflict, we also found in our power to create a lasting solution to the imperial rivalry in China as well as push for our open door policy, so we forced the other powers to merge their, their concessions in China and went to, into one conglomerate. Consisting of all of official concessions of China as well as 30 mile neutral zone, the legation cities officially known as the international mandate for the Chinese concessions hosts also has a forum, the legation council for the various powers with Chinese interest to dispute or resolve disputes and work together. Naturally, we have a vote on this council and we are often the deciding factor between the Japanese and Germans with the secondary powers mostly playing second fiddle to us. Our voice is usually one that speaks for keeping the status quo of an open door to China for all powers which helps, hopefully lets everyone benefit without having to involve themselves with individual Chinese factions. To American citizens, the legation cities represents not only a great way to get rich but a shining example of American forward thinking and a commitment to peace. A perfect arrangement. Absolutely perfect. Even though we can't deal with the Great Depression yet, and, well, whatever. Crime sprees sweep the nation. As a miracle spirals, spirals ever deeper into chaos, there's been a wave of crime throughout the country. Many of these criminals are getting sensationalist news stories about their activities, especially gangsters like Robert Baer and John Dillinger, Chicago crime boss Al Capone, and scandalous Bonnie and Clyde. Thankfully, the Bureau of Investigation has been working hard to catch these criminals and bringing some order back to America. Although they have requested an increase in funding, claiming they have a shortage of manpower. Of course, the AFP, ODP, and the SPA have been attributing these crimes to more moral decline and robber baronies. Increase FBI funding. We're going to spare anything at the moment. Uh, let's see. Stability is going to go tank anyway, so who cares? So, what are they... Oh, look at all this. The Socialist Party, the Vanguard version of the Socialist Party, the IWW version of the Socialist Party, the Independent Socialist Party of America. we got the Progressive Party, pretty normal. we got the Liberal part of the Republican Party. we got the Conservative part of the Republican Party. We've got the regular Democratic Party, who's got nothing special about it, apparently, at all, um, compared to everyone else we just saw, the Totalist Charter. We've got the America First Party. We've got the old Democratic Party, led by Murray, who, who I, I'll be honest here, I want him to get into power for this campaign, and we'll see what happens after that. And then the old Democratic Party, the <clears throat> National White League, wow. Oh, he's still led by Murray. Okay, cool. Edward VIII Crown is King of Britain, and Eugene Talmage flips. Go Georgia Governor Eugene Talmay has formally declared himself a member of the old Democratic Party after being a lifelong member of the Democratic Party, which he claims is selling out true Americans. A political faction with an ambiguous relationship to the Democratic Party, they appear to primary Democrats they disapprove of whenever possible, and when it's not, they run on their own ticket. When they win, they nonetheless often caucus with the Democrats, whom often dislike them but need their support. However, it is clear that the ODP is displacing sections of both parties, including the Cl the Klan controlled Indiana Republican Party, which has seen increasing defections of the ODP, which is a member of in all but name, anyways. And the Talmadge's declaration set off yet another wave of Democratic defectors to the ODP, especially in the American Southeast. Gosh darn dude. The ODP gains power. And now they're at well, this one's eight percent. That one's eleven percent. Report paramilitary growth. With violence and instability sweeping the country, J. Edgar Hoover, what a great man, has sent in a report that the AFP and the SPA have begun growing their existing paramilitary militias, which they claim is necessary to protect their support from either the government, vigilantes associated with the old Democrats, or even each other. The AFP have called the group the Minutemen, while the SPA has called their militants the Red Guard. Meanwhile, the old Democrats are associated with various white supremacist paramilitary groups, especially a vaunted national clan who's seen consistent growth as a result of immigrant radicalism, and a push for further recruitment pressed by... Press forward by Hiram Wesley Evans, apparent heir of Grand Wizard William Joseph Simons. Simmons. Patrolling the party strongholds and party rallies, these well-armed and equipped uh, paramilitary units have already engaged in scattered, though extremely violent, conflicts. We believe the paramilitaries are modifying civilian firearms and the FBI's attempts to seize weapons stockpiles are too slow to stop gun runners. This could turn very bad very fast. Gosh darn it. Wait, they're modifying guns? T can you teach me how? Cool. Anyways, uh, you didn't hear that from me. Uh, let's see. The U.S. Navy. Why not? Actually, no. We want to do the stuff on the left side, right? We want to do... Ah, yeah. The reintroduce of Ghana Wagner Bill. While well, originally vetoed in 1932, the economic situation in America has deteriorated to the point where unemployment relief efforts are seen as the only way to prevent widespread collapse. President Hoover has indicated to the Democrats in Congress that this time he will not veto this, the Garner Wagner Relief Bill. Status of the U.S. Army? Well... I like to do this one first, please. The defense of the U.S. has always been on an uphill battle. Stretched thin against a vast breadth of the North American continent, the U.S. state's army has little chance to distinguish itself throughout its 160-year history. It won the bare minimum of victories to maintain American independence during the Revolution and the War of 1812. It performed admirably against the corrupt regime in, America, in the Mexican-American War, but half those forces would provide the seed for the fledgling Confederate army during the ensuing Civil War. Most recently, the army performed bravely 
uh, barely adequate to subdue the heavily outgunned Spanish and struggle to suppress a half star Filipino insurrection more than 30 years ago, preventing or prevented from joining in on the Velt Creek on either side. It has suffered in both doctrine and technology, with no tanks at all, and a small air corps subsidiary to the ground forces. With a hobbled line that was the British Empire on the northern frontier and a cynical stronghold poised in the south, the U.S. Army must be asked to defend the Republic from enemies within and without, and few agree that they are up to the task. They'll have to suffice, though. More SBA members announcing congressional bids. While there have been a number of lawmakers from the Socialist Party of America in the past few decades, particularly in the Steel Belt, the 1936 election represents an unprecedented number of people registering to run for office under the banner of the SBA, and just as many, if not more, nationwide pledging to vote for them. Both Big Bill Haywood and John Lewis have begun increasing campaigning for their respective factions of the SBA to the enthusiasm of American Socialists. Reds. And the bill has been reintroduced with insurance by, by Hoover, that unlike at 32. This time, he would not be to the bill. Democratic Senator Robert Wagner, or Wagner, Wagner, and Speaker of the House John Nance Gardner, oh, have reintroduced their unemployment relief legislation package. Many in Congress feel that the package does not go nearly far enough, while others wonder how America, in the midst of a massive economic crisis, will possibly ever pay for. The presence of senators from the AFP and the SBA also complicates things immensely, even with Hoover's pl pledge. It's unknown if the Wagner or the Gardner Wagner has a real chance of passing. We shall see. National unity agreement. The 1936 election is looking to be one of the most contentious in American history. Many politicians up within the upper house or the upper circle of the Republican and Democratic parties fear that that a victory by the Socialist Party of America, the America First Party, or the old Democrats would mean the end of America and the American way of life. In order to avoid this, a plan has been proposed by the Republican Party, in which they will nominate a member of both the conservative and progressive wings of the party to the ticket to guarantee a moderate platform. As part of the agreement, the Republicans will not run candidates in the solid South to give traditional Democrats a better chance, and likewise, will not run party-endorsed candidates in progressive uh, heavy areas. This plan is unlikely to be popular with lower-ranking members of the parties, but it may be the only thing that can prevent the radical parties from getting strength. Most importantly, all parties agree that whichever party between the three of them wins a plurality of the vote for president will be endorsed by the other two parties for the president in the House of Representatives. Despite his lack of public popularity, President Hoover is still ahead of the Re Republican Party. His support would be invaluable to gaining support for the plan from more senators. Endorse agreement? A coalition would debase the democratic system? Absolutely. The, the coalition? No way. Black money hits America? Uh, despite the political turmoil and ineffectual economic relief programs, it seemed to many as if the economy of the U.S. might finally be undergoing a slow recovery after the Great Pandemic, or I keep saying pandemic, gosh darn coronavirus, Great Panic of 1929. Black Monday has put an end to such hopes, and it sounded the death knell for an already ailing economy. Republicans and Democrats have both pledged to fix the economy should they win the election, though public confidence in them is rapidly waning. Is this real life? Reed, William H. Murray, and Long have finally seemed to agree on something, as they've all rallied against the corrupt banking and political sectors which they blame for allowing the crash to happen. This is just not our year. Tell me about it and tell you guys about it. Oh my goodness. Gridlock in France, no one cares right now about the French. It is what it is. And actually, one thing cool about the Home of the Brave Mob is that it throws in more generals than what we normally have. Now, you'll see them when we, like, actually become the <clears throat> car. I'll, I'll say the car. So, yeah. You'll see why I call it the car, because it's called the car. Wayne right huh? Long and read demand changes. As expected, the early challenges to the Gardner-Wagner bill has come from the AFP and the SBA. Huey Long and his AFP senators have demanded a vast increase in the Social Security provisions the bill provides, provisions most other senators say America could never afford. Jack Reed and the SBA, meanwhile, say the bill doesn't go far enough to protect the average worker, particularly from exploitation by struggling corporations. Both parties have attracted a lot of media attention, according to the general sense of disorder and tensions in Congress. Interesting. Oh, so, hello, Joseph Steelwell. And right now, we're building up roads, roads, roads. I love South Florida. Actually, I've not been in South Florida for, like, 20 years at the time of this recording, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, South Florida is doing okay. Pretty warm, though, I bet. Death of Roy D. Chaplin, or Chaplin. The U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Roy D. Chaplin, has died today due to a severe heart attack. A close ally of Herbert Hoover within the Republican Party, Chaplin has desperately attempted to work with businesses, especially those in the motor industry, to undo the severeness of the Great Depression. With the Vice President, Charles Curtis, oh, bless his heart, only having survived his own heart attack earlier this month due to it occurring in the White House with medical staff on standby, many see this both as a symbolic and literal example of the old political class dying away and, or passing away in favor of new movements, although the Republican Party has protested such claims. A tragedy. Oh, God, that's such a good, great song. I love tragedy. Uh, and then we're building up northern Florida, southern Georgia, western Florida. Republican nomination disagreement. The Republican Party is unified in its goal to save America and preserve a liberal democracy, but as per usual, disagreement has arisen over whether a member of the party's progressive or conservative wing will be the president to oversee this. Representing the party's moderate conservatives is Charles Curtis, the vice president of the U.S., who is well-renowned for negotiating abilities amongst politicians, giving him a moderate appeal that crosses party lines, but... Representing the more liberal wing of the party is famed businessman and Kansas Governor Alf Landon, whom favors more direct economic intervention in the economy should and could win over progressive Republicans 
who recently defected to the left-leaning Progressive Party, while the loser will be the other's vice presidential candidate to show party solidarity. Hoover, using his little remaining political capital to back a candidate, could make or break him. Social liberalism, market liberalism. Hmm. Well, let's see. Uh, market liberals are yellow, and that's yellow. Republicans, they're social liberals. Well, we have more support for the market liberals, so that seems like we should probably. Mm, I don't know. I don't really care. We'll go with Alf Landing because we. No, we're not going to go with Alf Landing just because we can get him in base game. I want to get Curtis, who you can sometimes never get. I make my choices on political decisions regarding who we can and we can't get, so apparently. The Japanese troops garrisoned Tianjin. It seems that economic woes have gone down hard in the legation cities, and they've decided to outsource much of their security operations to the Japanese to keep their economy afloat. Well, there's little we can do to stop them. There has been an uproar in the council over the shifting balance of power, and with calls for Japan to not abuse their position in the city. Worrying, to say the least. Also, if you want to know, with Home of the Brave mod, you do not need to run Kaiserreich with this. I'm running four mods. Home of the Brave mod. Uh, State Chester Tool Mod, which apparently is not working now, if you look at the top. Uh, colored Events, as well as Player of the Peace Conferences. So, Senators break ranks. After weeks of negotiations, a number of establishment senators have broken ranks over the upcoming vote on the Gardner-Wagner Bill. Most notably, Robert Wagner, Wagner, one of the bill's proposers, who says he will not vote for the bill unless protections for federal unemployment insurance are re-added. Many other Democrat and Republican senators are concerned about the influence of the AFP and the SBA, and they claim they will not vote for the bill if any concessions are made to either group, though others say that not courting either the AFP or SBA will make passage difficult, if not impossible. President Hoover will need to intervene in order to save the bill. Pledge support to Wagner and the establishment senators. Force the establishment to compromise the AFP. Well, I'm going to... Uh, I'm not really sure which one. Hmm. Let's do the top one. Why not? Why not? And I apologize for talking really fast. We got a lot of months to go through. We got like a little year left to go through before the Civil War even really begins. Restoration of democracy in Australasia. We'll see how long it lasts. Ling and Ro Long, Long and Reed are furious. Both big old daddy Huey Long and Mr. Slim Jim himself, Jack Reed, have reacted with fury at the President Hoover's endorsement of establishment senators. They vowed to sink the Ghana Wagner bail, claiming that the public is being deceived by a corrupt government which refuses to recognize the reality of America. This 2020. While the parties have both gained a considerable boost in support from their base, Democratic and Republican fortunes have improved somewhat, and there's a feeling that both have a better chance of going to the next election, provided that the bill actually passes. Let's hope it does. And see what happens. Death of Pius the, the 11th. Also, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to bring it up. Gallo seizes the control of Ecuador. Cool. Oh, Canada, you, you, you're done being a warmonger, huh? Good for you, Canada. Wow, quite a bit of lag. What's going on? Is someone breaking up? Hello? Hello there. A St. Patrick's Day flood. On March 16th, 1936, warmer than usual temperatures led to the melting of large amounts of snow and ice in the upper... Oh, oh, oh this word. Allegheny. Allegheny? Allegheny. And Monongahela rivers. The rivers in the tributaries already overflew or overflowed their banks and were soon threatening the city of Pittsburgh. On March 17th, 1936, the waters reached a flood stage of 25 feet. Then overnight, heavy rain caused the water to rise even higher. And on March 18th, the water peaked at about 46 feet, gosh darn, 21 feet above the flood stage. This is the worst of such disaster in the city's history. And local authorities have already requested federal aid. We must help the people. They have to help themselves because I don't care about stability right now. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, uh, stability. Who needed it? Now, Jing Click, go, goodbye, China, the first International Congress, Electronical and Mechanical Engineering. We're going to go with Mechanical Computing next. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll get another event right soon, because then we get either the bill passes or it fails. We'll see what happens. I don't care if it passes or fails. Actually, usually if it passes, that's pretty rare, so I don't want it to pass. We'll, we'll see what happens within like a minute or two, so. Next event. Good luck, Your Holiness. Reintroduce bill. We'll see what happens. And it fails, of course it does. After an incredibly close vote in Congress, the bill failed to pass, with several groups are declaring personal victory. Protests have broken out in various parts of the country. There will be no relief for the American worker, and many have declared the government to be corrupt and dysfunctional. There will be considerable time for blame, for blame. but for the moment, the Hoover government's concerns must turn to the growing violence throughout American cities, violence which is expected only to worsen in the months leading up to the election. All that for nothing? God. I love America. But let's go ahead and do it. The bill fails. The Ghana Wagner bill has failed to pass. This leaves America without the clear route towards recovery and with a growing insurgency which needs to be addressed. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do or demand repayment of the war debts. The UK incurred an enormous war debt to us during the Valkyrie. That hasn't been inherited by Canada, of course. While it's unlikely Canada could repay right now, demanding the repayments will appease isolations to Congress who we believe will believe or will join the political fringe if not appeased. Democratic nomination. The Democratic Party has nominated the Texas representative John Nance Gardner, whose political clout was derived from being the Speaker of the House for the past two years. Gardner is a well-known anti-radical who won the nomination on the back of two promises. One, to preserve the economic progress made by Wilson, and 
Two, to preserve liberty at all costs. As Wilson remains controversial even within the party, this has raised a fair amount of debate and angered members of the party who felt Garner was too conservative and out of touch to be president. Nonetheless, it is much more support than, that, than not within what remains of the Democratic Party that is increasingly being absorbed by either the old Democrats or on its right on its right wing or the AFP and the progressives on the left. Garner's promise to preserve democracy without giving in to any form of radicalism and denouncing those who would give extreme compromises to them is appealing to many fearful of what America's increasing political instability could become. Gosh darn Democrats. Well, that's all right. Let it happen. Embrace the change. Embrace the radicalization. Am I talking about game or real life? I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oh, uh, let's see the third. Stanley Cup. The two teams have made it into the 1936 Stanley Cup Finals. The Toronto Maple Leafs making their sixth appearance, and the Detroit Red Wings making their second appearance and still hungry to win the first cup. With only a brief interruption at the first game in Detroit, with demonstrators by the Socialist Party of America disrupting proceedings outside the stadium, the series has gone off without a hitch and captivated audiences in both countries. Who will take home the cup this year? Come on, Detroit! Gosh dang it, Toronto. Toronto has vanquished Detroit in four-game series for the Stanley Cup, bringing the Canadian team their fourth victory in the finals. Once again, the kid line of the Charlie Conacher, Harvey Busher Jackson, and Joe Premu has brought the Stanley Cup to Toronto. We'll win next year. My apologies about that high-pitched whatever you heard, maybe in the background. That's just my family members being weird. All right. With Sylvia and Rosen from South Florida, the progressive nomination. Vocally opposing their home rule plan is empowering extremist elements of the country. Longtime liberal Nebraska Sanders and respected statesman George Norris accepted the progressive party nomination for president, a party that's begun as a breakaway faction from the Republican Party, just affected by the GOP's conservative handling of the economy since the Great Depression. Seeing the problems in America's political system was a symptom of unfair economic policies and a lack of opportunity. Norris endorsed a massive project to reinvest in poor communities and work with union leaders to not only destabilize the country, but make it truly fair. Liberal Democrats, disaffected by the nomination of Garner, the student's interest in his message. Gosh darn splitters. More social democracy support. And the next event, I mean, we get at least one event per week, right? That's how we do stuff here, right? Anyways, I've not touched the Navy at all. I've not touched the Air Force because there's no point in even touching it because where we're going, it's okay. Special elections in New Jersey, though. Following Senator Her a. Harry Moore's resignation in order to run for governor. A special election has been called in New Jersey to select his replacement. The front runners are Democrat John Gerald Milton and old Democrat supporter Charles Lindbergh. Polls are closed and the winner appears to be the Democrat Party. Oh, Charles Lindbergh. Well, I like a little CL in my life, I guess. Why not? 11 and 6? Not bad. My friends, we've just almost made it to May. Cool, we got some research. Let's grab some old scout cards, because those would be pretty useful. And, oh, let's get some fighters. Panama pressures Costa Rica. The Panamanians have become a small-scale military assault in the Koto region of Costa Rica, which they have a claim on for some time. We should threaten intervention to prevent this from turning into a full-scale war. May Day riots. May Day International Workers' Day. This is a holiday that the Socialist Party celebrates with numerous parades and speeches and has, since its founding. Generally, though, things are peaceful. Though there have been some confrontations with the police, however, things... This time, things are more violent than normal. Clashes have occurred between socialists and the po local police backed up by the AFP and the ODP have occurred around the country. The question is, who is at fault? The socialists declared that things were peaceful until the police and the KKK arrived on the scene. The old Democrats are saying that the socialists began by assaulting non-unionized workers and have blurry photos they claim our guns the SPA were brandishing. Um, the socialist party gains power the police were at fault. The police totally. And special elections in Washington. Following the death of Senator Wesley Flo Lloyd, a special election has been called in Washington to fill a seat. The front runners are SBA activist John F. McKay and Democratic Congressman John Maine Coffey. Polls have just closed and the winner appears to be socialist. Let's lose power. I've got, I've got to go with a guy named Coffee. I don't have any with me here, but that's okay. Since the nomination of Senator Norris as a progressive presidential candidate, the political politically minded have discussed with great interest the likely vice presidential candidate. Finally putting the, the rumors to rest, Quentin Roosevelt was announced as a VP for the, for the progressive ticket yesterday in New York City. In his announcement, he emphasized wanting to help bring major reforms to the country through a plan called the Fair Deal. The nomination is a shock to the Republican political class who don't care to see the descendant of a popular president joining another party when he had a bright future of the GOP, perhaps remembering the results of Theodore Roosevelt founding the original Progressive Party and splitting the ticket as a result. A deal that is fair and a deal that is square. Fire and squire, huh. Barra, 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 nice. And Panama backs down after hearing of American support for Costa Rica, and not willing to escalate the situation into full-blown conflict. The forces of Panama have begun to back down across the region. This is a victory for American diplomacy abroad. The Monroe Doctrine stands. You better not do anything bad, Panama. Not today. Maybe next time in the next campaign. We'll see what happens, though. Stability? Didn't need it. 
And then we'll do Curtis's nomination in a massive rally in Sacramento with leading members of the Republican Democratic parties. The boss president Curtis himself came out to accept his nomination as a Republican presidential candidate. This massive rally has been surprisingly well received by the press and those attending it. Hopefully it can translate to election results. Let us pray that this helps us. And next up we're going to do War Plan Y. War Plan Y is a military action plan to contend with the domestic violence or an insurgency. It's time to dust off the plan and deal directly with the growing violence in America and I apologize but I'll be right back. All right, everyone, sorry about that, but the Old Democrats announced a nominee themselves. The Old Democrats have officially announced their expected candidate for this year's presidential race. Denouncing the more centrist conservative wing of the Democratic Party and its liberal members as sellouts to Republican industrialists, Catholics, Jewish money, and Washington bureaucrats at their convention. Originally a faction formed as a reaction to the growth of syndicalism and a reinvigorated civil rights movement. It also gained strength as a result of Woodrow Wilson and A. Mitchell Palmer's encouraging of increasingly radical forms of anti-socialism during the first Red Scare. Republican tariffs during the Great Depression have also har that have harmed agriculture have led to greater support for the movement. Today, they declared their nominee for president to be their longtime de facto leader and governor of Oklahoma, William H. Murray, who said that he's running a campaign against communist corporations and uh, <clears throat> miscegenation. If you actually look him up in real life, he has the three C's, which... It's a little different, but, you know, he received support from the Fordist Democrats, an informal name for a group of national corporatists and urban-based Northern Democrats led by Charles Lindbergh and Henry Ford, as well as the KKK and their affiliates within the National Democratic White League. Not even radical candidates, but Canada refuses the tariffs or the repayment of debt. The Canadian government has responded to the demands with a flat refusal. The debt, they say, was never meant to be repaid until the home isles were retaken, as most was incurred by the UK government, which is now in exile. Even so, the refusal has done its job and fired up the isolationist elements of the American government. Prison Hoover's government has the support it needs at the cost of relations with the Canadians. So be it. So be it. So be it. Well, if we falter, Canada goes down with us, so let's be real here. Canada is going to fall with us, or we'll just take it over later on. But we'll see what happens. Hope we can do well. Wow. Now that looks fabulous. Interesting. Wow. Oswald Mosley certainly has a way with looks. Hmm. We'll get some more roads and transport done on June 3rd in uh, Southern Florida. Not bad. A. Mitchell Palmer dies. Oh, no. Former President A. Mitchell Palmer died of a heart complication today, shortly after receiving an ap appendectomy. While the establishment parties, naming the Republicans and Democrats, gave statements expressing relief for his, or grief for his death, the other parties and much of the public seem to be ambivalent about his death and are not issuing any statements at all. The socialists stand alone and practically openly, openly celebrating his death, seeing that Palmer was a tyrant whose two-term presidency after taking over for Woodrow Wilson was responsible for Americans... For the Americas, for America's current state and the tax on union workers, the ODP appears to approve of Palmer's Red Scare and have issued a statement thanking him for his efforts, although they reputed his more liberal statements. Long himself barely commented, only saying that Palmer was a flawed man. Barra, barra well. At least we can all agree that no one agrees on anything. Or at least, not that much at least. Ah, uh, war plan wide. Ah, uh, Hubert Hoover. H H. Wait, H H. Hmm, he's indecisive. So that, kind of like me sometimes, with uh, decisions in Hearts of Iron 4, no matter what the mod, or even just base game. Let's see, the Republican Party is doing pretty well, but even 19% isn't that great. we got some construction done, that's great. we figured out how to build roads, or build some stuff in general. We have increasing radicalization. With the Democrats and Republicans fighting among themselves as usual, more and more Americans are fully feeling alienated from the traditional two big parties and are flocking to the populist AFP, Old Democrats, and SBA throughout the country. In these dark times, the distinction between genuine social reform and graft is hard to distinguish. Those under the radical banner and the political enclaves have received some social warfare with share wealth, donations from the AFP, international red aid from the SBA, and the machine handouts and the white league protections from the Old Democrats. The party machine of these radical radicals utilizes mass media to a much stronger degree than either the R's or the D's. It's looking more and more like the 1936 election will come down to read Long and Murray. Not great. I think that's fabulous. Like like Oswald Mosley. Absolutely fabulous. So we've got about 12 days left. And we got a lot of days left here. We could train these guys, but I don't really feel like it. We'll do it anyways. Agree. Hey, heat wave at 36. A heat wave struck the continental U.S. and Canada. The most severe heat wave in the modern history of North America, the Great Heat Wave, started in late June and went up to over 100 degrees Fahrenheit as drought conditions worsened due to a continued lack of rain. Now in July, the heat has reached an all-time record. In Steele, North Dakota, temperatures have reached 121 degrees Fahrenheit. In Ohio, temperatures have reached 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which was close to a time, or a time to a record high set in 1934. This comes in a time of majority or major political unrest with the America First Council, a major force in Midwest politics, and social syndicalist forces gathering strength in the Great Lakes region. The drought is continuing, and over 3,000 reported deaths have been linked to it. Many people are suffering from heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Farmers across the continent saw the worst harvest on record, causing corn and wheat prices to skyrocket, and this heat wave does not seem to be giving any time soon. This just isn't our year. 
Once again, are they talking about the mod or real life? War plan wide, the town has come to dust off one of America's military color coded war plans. This will meant for dealing with domestic disturbances and insurgencies. It cannot come at a moment too soon as violence is escalating in areas where the AFP and SBA have been contending with local authorities for dominance. Minnesota and North Carolina are the two states where the violence is at its height, and at the moment, we can only focus on our efforts in one place. Focus on the SPA, Old Democratic Party gains power, or Old Democratic Party loses power. We're going to focus on the SBA in Minnesota. Minnesota. To pull the National Guard, the violence caused by supporters of the American First Party and the Socialist Party of America is only getting worse. We need to increase funding to the National Guard units and put them where the efforts will count the most. Coup d'etat? Very cool. Less market liberalism? Well, so be it. It's not that high anyways. Right. Yeah. 13-8. How oh, socialists? There's a lot of different factions of socialists. Well, more than anyone else, I guess. Uh, someone assumes full control of Argentina. And Red Summer, the summer has turned... The summer heat has turned into violence and blood of cities, starting with Charleston, South Carolina, throughout the country, engage in a bloody racial riots as whites beat up blacks and burn black businesses. The number of lynchings that occurred throughout the country spiked during the summer. In response, the African Blood Brotherhood and other elements of the SBA and SCSA have begun arming and fighting back. The Socialist Party of America has defended their actions and furnished blurry foes they claim showing old Democrat members in lynch mobs. Can this year get any worse? That is another party that does... Oh, military. Uh, that can spawn the... Something something republic? There's like a black republic too that spawns if you play as a car nation and if you don't win fast enough they can come up which is not good for them. At least for the car, but good for the uh, the other nation. Anyways, what's on over China? It's been more than two months since the League of Eight Provinces ceased to exist and war broke out on the shores of the Yangtze River. Well, with chaos reigning in eastern China, reliable news has been harder to obtain ever than, than ever before. Despite the censorship implemented by the warlords and the Qing government, a young journalist made his way with the cleverness and courage through the war-torn lands of the former League to the south to the mountains of Fujian base area of the KMT. Edgar Snow. Edgar Snow. He's not Edward Snowden, but Edward, Edward, Edward Snow, who came to Shanghai in 1928 from the U.S., works for an English newspaper in the city. His bravery to cross the front lines and open sympathy to the cause of the KMT has opened his way to interview the leadership of the uprising. Today's hastily printed book, White Center Over China, hits the stores and found great interest with Western readership. Besides the talks with his interview partners, he paints a vivid picture of the life in the KMT-controlled parts of China, different from the warlord rule, but not without strife. His stories, while clearly picking a side, is so invoked sympathy for the KMT struggle all over the world, especially in the left circles. Quiet an adventure in MacArthur's Independence Day Address. Broadcasting from New York City, MacArthur gave a radio address this 4th of July that denounced the violence between radicals and promised the American people that the military was more than prepared to restore order. Well, this was good and all, but... There is an issue that MacArthur did not even alert the president that he would be speaking to the nation. Charles Curtis is infuriated by others in the cabinet. Clearly admired that MacArthur's clique and his ability to reassure many establishment figures that he can restore order to the nation. Nonetheless, this cannot be a good sign for democracy, but while MacArthur has too many followers in our military to fire, we could rec in which if we were to reprimand him for whatever that's worth, we can do that. Reprimand him? You know what? Let's leave him be. Let this all increase and escalate. Nothing bad can happen from a bunch of escalation, right? Progressive flock to the grand old party. Minnesota, which has come, become the bastion of progressive Senator Floyd Olson, has come to flip away from the traditional parties, mainly the Republicans. Many f people are turning away from the Republicans on the direction of uh, progressives, AFP, and even SPA. Various unions have held rallies for these parties, and attendance far outstrips their ability to outshout them. Is it something in the water? <clears throat> Minnesota is a weird state. I'll put it like that. Then again, at least it's not Ohio. Why are you splitting? What? How is that? S Southern Ohio. It's not southwestern Ohio? Look at Indiana. Southern Indiana. And then I guess you have the rest of normal Indiana. We have, at least it says southern Illinois. But then it just says Illinois. Gone with the Wind. Margaret Mitchell, publisher of novel today, Gone with the Wind, which immediately became a bestseller, may be nominated for the next Pulitzer Prize. Even Hollywood is taking notice. And is planning a film adaptation to be released next year. Soon in the Old South during the American Civil War. Many see it as an analogy for the strained political situation in the U.S. Many conservative southerners claim the novel supports their cause. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a darn. Iowa, well, at least Iowa looks normal, with a bulge towards Chicago. Fighting in Arkansas, the situation in Arkansas is deteriorating as the state government cannot contain the increased fighting between the AFP Miniman and the old Democratic line, what leagues, especially the Klan. Long's radically populist economic agenda in alliance with groups such as Jews and Catholics has incurred the hatred of both the more reactionary landed families in the region as well as supremacist groups despite his attempts to largely dodge or not, or when not possibly regularly flipping on. The question of furthering civil rights for black Americans, as his ambitions put him at the odds of the old Democratic Party, seems more willing than they to make alliances with progressives. Competition between the AFP and the ODP has broken down in outright warfare between the two, with Minutemen being, having recently attempted to assassinate local white league leader Homer Martin Adkins, but only succeeding in wounding him. 
long ally Haiti Wyatt Caraway is calling for support against the K the clans terror attacks given they are the main cause of fighting, whereas much of the established class on the eastern side of Arkansas, including Congressman Ezekiel C. Gad Gatings, desires a crackdown on the AFP. Traditional Democrat and former ally Woodrow Wilson Joseph Robinson recommends a crackdown on both, however. Counter both? Will they lose political power? Counter the clan. Counter the Minutemen. We can't involve ourselves right now. Well, counter the Minutemen, because they seem to be the most violent, right? <laughs> Lieutenant Governor assassinated Emma T. Anderson, the Republican Lieutenant Governor of Washington State, was killed when he exited his home, and two assassins exited their vehicle out front and gunned him down with 38 revolvers. Anderson was a supporter of civil rights in the region, and the KKK-affiliated Royal Riders of the Red Row were strongly rumored to have committed the act. An auxiliary of the KKK for a while, white Anglo-Saxons who are not technically naturalized American citizens, most of the Red Riders are Canadian-born supporters of the Klan, whose leader, J. Arthur Herdon, was increasingly opposed to Anderson's policies and is said to have made threatening references to him in his speeches. Well, killings are not new to the second clan, it is rare for them to successfully target such a high ranking and beloved official, and unsurprisingly, their demands to investigate the group despite Hiram, Wesley Evans, and William Joseph Simmons denying any connection to the killing and downplaying the Royal Raiders' involvement in the National White League. While the most militaristic White League Leaguers. That sounds weird. Leaguers? Support the act in Washington State itself. This violence has backfired, with many turning out to the state capital to mourn the loss of Anderson and support his memories of a fair minded man. Hit the Red Riders. Hit the clan. Um. The state government can handle this? The government can handle this. Ah. Uh, we're headed towards the gamer time. Liberia asked for aid. The Liberian government, crippled by the effects of Black Monday on top of their overwhelming national debt, has sent an envoy requesting the American government assist with a bailout. We have our own issues to deal with, but the amount they desperately need is a small but comparison among guarantees of continued ally in Africa. How should we respond? They're on their own. Mm, they're on their own. Southern Democrats voters along with the old Democrats. The, Dem the South has been long considered the heartland of the traditional Democratic elites, but this may not be the case for much longer as polls show a massive spike in votes for the old Democrats and support for the nominee. On radio broadcast, William H. Murray spoke at length about his plans for American any threats to the white American way of life. It seems that the old Democrat support is growing stronger by the day, and they have pledged to run campaigns against mainstream Democrats who continue working with the Republican Party. What are you, a devious madman? But it makes it for an interesting time. I love the chaos. After that, we will go ahead and reconcile with Canada. Let's piss everyone off. So, last relations are related, but the cost of relations with Canada. We can try rebuilding those relations by offering a compromise, some assistance from Canada now, with the debt deferred until after the war. In exchange, we'll reduce the import tariffs from the Entente. Bringing out the National Guard, the National Guard has been deployed for over six months now, fighting to maintain security in a number of American cities. With a growing fear that many commanders within the Guard are not entirely loyal to the Republic, that many harbor sympathies for the AFP and the Socialists. More focus needs to be put on strengthening the units we know are loyal. We need to decide where to focus their deployments for the time being. Iowa, in which the old Democratic Party gains power, and the American First Party loses power, or Tennessee. Old Democratic Party loses power. Now nah, I've got us. I was too big to lose compared to Tennessee. Well, they all, they have roughly the same population. They have five civilian factories. They have two. Actually, Tennessee is much more important. Never. No, I didn't say that. You didn't hear that. Mm -mm. How are the roads though in Florida? The roads are looking great. Thanks for asking. Even Northern Florida is doing pretty well. MacArthur speaks to Hoover, huh? MacArthur spoke to the president privately about a contingency plan called War Plan White, a military plan for dealing with a possible armed uprising of U.S. citizens. The plan will call on MacArthur to take emergency action to protect the country and re-erect old barricades in Washington, D.C. This plan can be engaged from event, even from outside Washington, D.C., at the Washington Arsenal. While the plan has obviously not been made public, we at least have a contingency of the radicals enact one of the revolutions from within the government. MacArthur went on request for permission to hold New Mexico, which has been which has seen activity from both the Klan and Minutemen, but in some of the cabinet are nervous about empowering MacArthur. Further, feeling is abusing his authority. Denied. Grant support. Denied. MacArthur, you're not allowed to do anything. This isn't your fight. If you want to do something, you should have ran for Presidente. <clears throat> and the next event. It's not here yet. It's very weird. How much command power do we get every day? 0.07! That's not very good. That's not very good at all. We're isolationist. For isolation. Ex we're isolationist, but we are on export focus. Hmm. The Battle of the Overpass in Detroit, Michigan. The automotive capital of the world, Walter Reuter and Richard Frankenstein, the leaders of the United Auto Workers Association, called a general strike against the Ford Motor Company, proclaimed themselves for unionism, not forwardism, demanding higher pay and fewer hours for automotive workers. Automotive workers. At 2 p.m. today, a photographer from the Detroit Free Press asked to take a photo of the leaders of the UAW standing on an overpass with a Ford sign in the background. While they're opposing, a group of 40 men from the Ford Service Department approached the approached them from behind and began to beat them beat them senseless with their batons. The group then continued their attack on some of the we beret-wearing women present present to pass out leaflets. Those who hurt us more than the unionists. 
It is what it is. MacArthur's plan. General MacArthur's raised a solid point. New York City and Texas are, are two of our most vital and vulnerable strongholds. MacArthur's a plan which could see one of these areas secured should the violence escalate to a full civil war. People from Vancouver and L.A. to, to New York and D.C. let us set a sigh of relief as the great heat wave of 36 has come to an end. And now a cold front is spread over North America. It will come to be known as the United States' deadliest natural disaster of the 20th century with an estimated death toll reaching 5,000. But even as the heat wave ends, a new chapter in American history is about to begin. At least it's over. And you know what? It ends on September 11th. Hmm. Hmm. That seems very odd. We have relief on September 11th. Thank God, this is weird. This is very weird. And... Another event? Probably. Actually, the director's boy is Cactus Jack. Oh, uh, we... Uh, we'll probably... Uh, Kennedy agrees to compromise. Canadian government has reluctantly agreed to the compromise, giving us what repayment they can now and accepting the deferment until the whole miles have been retaken. In exchange, a trade agreement has been put in place between the Entente, something that's likely beneficial for all of us. The main downside is the agreement has been viewed as a treachery by the AFP and the SBA, both of which claim our corrupt government has betrayed the very first people. They fired up only the moments before. We'll take what we can get. Now, we have Cactus Jack. A blow for liberty. Finish anarchism. That's kind of cool. Uh, sovereignty of the legislature? But we prefer President Murray. Mar, 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 mar. So we got those peepee -pee right now. Can we spend it here? No, we can't. Actually, we can spend peepee -pee on other stuff. Um, it really doesn't matter. It really. Oh, Hoover. Sours. Um, let's see. Well, since we have it now, we might as well spend it, right? I want to do whatever I can. Oh, that's not bad. Bethlehem steel. I love Pennsylvania. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that so so quickly. I've been to Gettysburg before, like I said in several other videos. We should explore other parts of Pennsylvania, but then again, you have you, you need money to travel, so we don't have a lot of that right now. Hmm. Where's stuff for infrastructure? Do they not care about infrastructure? Do they not care about the people and the roads that they build? Synthetic resource efficiency gain. I am literally stopping the game right now to find if I can build any more roads. Factory output, but that doesn't matter. <clears throat> Well, that's so dumb. We can't build more roads. Screw it. I'll get more political power then. There you go. Irving Brown. Oh. It says we can't change ministers willy-nilly. Can't be manually added or removed. Well, I just broke the game. <laughs> Free trade. Yeah, let's go. Violence between radicals. A number of major cities, conflicts between supporters of the America First Party, old Democrats, and SPA have broken out in violence. Partisan fist fights and even all shootouts are starting to become a regular occurrence throughout the country as the country ever spirals deeper into chaos. While public eruptions are easy to counter, the enclaves these routes have cut out of city blocks run on the graphs harder they're harder and harder to stop. This just ain't our year, now is it? Oh, everyone loses power, huh? That sucks. Let's just give power to everybody. I love that we went to free trade, now we have five percent more construction speed. Go, go, go! Build, build, build. Oh, Radio. Radio's pretty nice. We got some fighters. Uh, maybe some uh, some carrier fighters. And we shall also grab what? Some fuel storage. Because America, well, we love oil and we love fuel. I don't know. That just sounds like we should probably stockpile a lot of the fuel. Campaigning hardline militias. Wait. Campaigning hardens militia lines. Um, Is there a problem here? Go and do that, please. The campaign between Huey Long's AFP, SBA, and ODP have grown so volatile that no one apparently to dares to campaign in the strongholds of the others. AFP Miniman began actively patrolling the borders of hostile states with the collaboration of governors in order to dissuade them from attacking with the o ODP and the SBA returning the favor. This is virtually the end of the new party's militias operating from the shadows, with them no longer being afraid to behave as a military force would, and some of our own officers aiding them in their training, organization, and patrolling, making them into a more cohesive force. War may be coming? Nah, what? what? No. People prefer to stay inside and not do anything. They prefer to be milk toast, uh, was it, armchair generals like me? Let's all watch and have a good time as everyone kills each other off. Arrowhead? Minnesota, huh. I should go to Minnesota sometime, too. Representatives retiring. Many Republicans and old Democratic representatives have announced that this year will be the last year in Congress. While many retirees claim old age mo motivated them, rumors of gang intimidation by the SPA and the other two congressmen, uh, the two other groups, you know, congressmen reminds many of the congressional brawl between Charles Sumner and Preston Brooks. The unprecedented rate of their retirement is given hope to the o o o o o AFP, old Democrats, and SPA that they can win, they can win these open elections. I hope they get good replacements. Oh, I hope they get great replacements. How's Maine doing? Maine is a very weird state. You never think about Maine. It's all the way in the tippy-toppy of the Northeast. 
Jr. MacArthur's plan. There is a growing concern that America is descending into a possible civil war of that, and that despite all our efforts to maintain security, supporters of the AFP and the SBA simply have too much influence in some parts of the country. General Douglas MacArthur has unveiled a plan to infiltrate key areas in either New York City or in southern Texas. Both are of high importance, New York for its industry and Texas for its oil, but both are at high risk to take over. MacArthur says that these efforts might still come to naught if the FB AFP and the SBA's power become too great, but he believes it will greatly increase the government's chance of maintaining control should it come to an armed conflict. New York City is of vital importance. Or we absolutely need that Texan oil. Old Democratic Party gains political power. The old the party gains more power. Period. Um, honestly, with the Feds taking this, so when the Civil War starts, this is actually going to be American Union state power. So it doesn't even matter. And obviously, New York City is not going to be us either. So it doesn't matter at all. I don't want to see the Socialists get stronger, but I definitely don't want to see the American First Party get that strong either. So, cool. Next up on the docket. It's October... Oh, God, it's October 29th already. Wow. It's already October 29th. Wow, go, go figure. Let's do an American Air Force debate, maybe? No, let's do... What else can we do? Ah, U.S. Navy. The American Navy, an institution whose history is so deeply interwoven with that of the nation as a whole, has been steadily in decline after years of neglect. No more, we must turn again our attention to naval affairs. As the country starts to burn. Ah, that's all right, though. More market liberalism? Nah, we good. Can I go even further than free trade? Like, what's what's beyond free trade? Like, we have export focus for free trade. What's beyond that? Like, like no borders, no nothing. Oh, the presidential elections. Look at this. The results are finally in from what is probably the most ideologically contested presidential election the U.S. has ever witnessed. None of the three major parties have secured enough votes in the Electoral College to outright win the presidency. And as a result, the House of Representatives once again has to vote on the winner of their election. While many are expecting the so-called mainstream parties to back one another, the old Democrats are attempting to court conservatives while the SBA demands progressives back at them or be held responsible for a reactionary vision or victory. Meanwhile, Long is seemingly attempting to cut a deal with every representative in his arm's reach, especially the Progressive Party, left wing of the GOP, and more populous Democrats. This is probably not going to end our problems, but the time being, we want, do we want Curtis, Jack Reed, Daddy Huey Long, Old Dude William H. McMurray, uh, George Norris, and Mr. John Nance Godner, or Deadlock. I don't know what happens to Deadlock, but we got to go with the old Democrats, just because of the way we've already been going so far. Oh, Democrat or Edo's. Okay, so I'm not sure why he's here already. Just because he's been selected, but... Actually, can we do his other focus first? Hold on, let's, let's take a look. No. He's not been inaugurated, but he, he has his portrait here anyways. Because he can be, can, cause he can have his portrait here. Okay. Disperse industry, thank you very much. We're going to go and grab some extraction. We might not be able to get that research done, though. Who do we want here? Um, Daily pickle power gain. Oh, well, we can't swap these guys out, which really sucks, whatever. SBA contest election results. Members of the Socialist Party of America refuse to accept the results of a free and fair election, claiming that the House of Representatives system has diverted the will of the majority. Jack Reed has said as much and called the whole of Congress to reactionary for this injustice. Independent newspaper from the inside of the SBA reported that the AF AFL are beginning to show cracks in the solidarity with Reed. Gosh darn Reed. Well, it is what it is, I guess. Especially when the House of Representatives does it. No one's going to be happy, I guess. But, what you going to do about it? I don't know. I really don't know if there's anything you can do about it. When the House of Representatives selects the uh, candidate, so. Where does it go up? How can you, like, even contest that? Anyways, Long proclaims defense of Americanism. Long has announced the, wh that while the AFP lost the election, the old Democrats cannot expect to get their agenda through Congress without his support and proclaims he will vote in favor of those policies that favor the American people and against those they don't. It clear, it's clear he wishes to become kingmaker or divided Congress and views the election of an anti-establishment party as his opening. The old Democrats fervently hate Long for his opposition to old money and his local battle for power with the Klan despite him keeping, attempting to keep this quiet. Gosh darn dude. God dang it, there's nothing here I really want. I guess we'll go with industry. Whoever is best at... Okay, I'll just use... Oh, we don't have enough political power now. Okay, bye-bye, power. Goodbye! Before we done here, Florida is going to have a lot of nice roads. A lot of nice railroads. A lot of good... Maybe sewer, sewer systems as well? Republican victory in Brazil? As expected, I guess. Come on, keep building in southern Georgia. Please build more, 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 more. 
You say that's the U.S. Navy. The U.S. Navy, along the darling child of the American defense establishment, has been a long, strong force in the global maritime affairs for nearly 50 years. A rival even to the vaunted Kaiser Lucia Marine and Royal Navy at the height of their Valkyrie. It has defended America's shores and sailed forth to spread civilian democracy for now 160 years. From John Paul Jones raid on the British mainland to the Battle of Manila Bay, the Navy has provided the security needed by the Republic for those that would infringe upon our independence from beyond the seas. All is not well in the modern day, however. <coughs> Excuse me. The Navy ships are old, or flagships of Valkyrie Air Dreadnoughts, even as Germany and the Syndicalists engage in a new naval arms race. And the tattered remains of the Royal Navy lick their wounds. New carriers have been commissioned, but they are nowhere near ready to take on the Imperial Japanese fleet. The Marine Corps fares bare hardened as they are all by constant action in the tropical lands, but they are too small. Only while only a few regiments strong and powerless affect increasing tension at home from the far flung island bases. The Army Guard of Washington, D.C. looks increasingly powerless as violence in the nation's capital increases. Our white ships might dominate the waves, but many question whether there will be enough to face a gathering storm in the horizon. Semper Fortis? Well, we'll see what happens. Alright, so I want to choose a really short focus if we can. Um, let's see, it's 42 days, 42, probably all 42. These guys are 35. I kind of like that one. Yeah, let's go with 35 then. Air Force debate. The Air Force having the funding necessary to expand lacks precise or the persis decision and leadership needed to effectively advance. With numerous requests to fund research and competing minds, insisting that they are the key to victory in the skies. Research, how's it coming along? Oh, not bad. Grimmel men and fuel storage. It's almost 37, which isn't bad. I don't think we'll be able to get stuff done. We'll probably go ahead and maybe try something with support companies, maybe? Oh, it's even longer than artillery. Fuel storage, what do we want? Uh, la 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 la. That's way too long. That's way too long. Air Doctrine. Um, 140 days. Well, I'll do some of that. And because we can, let's grab some of this. Smoke generators. Wrong one. Thank you. Carrier fighters. And there you go. Nice. Not bad. Our end of war armored cars. Sure, we'll make a lot of those. A ton of those. Italian democracy survives, so it would seem, at least for now. It's almost 1937, and we're going to have a great, great year, everyone. Nothing bad would ever happen in 1937. Or 2020. Or 2021. Nothing bad. Anyways, focus on the ODP, huh? Shake the world. Shake, 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 shake. Conscription crisis in Quebec. More troubles in Canada, it seems. Address the masters of finance. Revolutionary Defense Committee. President Murray. Oh, it's only a five-day focus. That's nice. Happy 1937, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. We're going to have a fun time with everything that's going to happen here, here, here. One more days, and then which... Well, I'm just going to go and do President Murray. William H. Murray, the old Democratic Party, has won the election to the outrage of his opponents and is prepared to implement a right-wing nationalist agenda. Cool. Uh, Air Force independent debate. The Air Force has remained as a mostly tokenistic part of the Army, with barely any investment going toward it during the 20s and 30s. However, air development during these last decades have proven that a strong Air Force is a vital asset for an Army who wishes to come out victorious from the battlefield, unfortunately. Uh, Army High Command in many aspects refuses to acknowledge this, and results spark conflict within many Air Branch generals who wish to direct the development of their own branch. With the country's integrity at stake, the High Command has decided to negotiate with the Air Force generals with and the result of the negotiations is pretty clear. The Air Branch will not stand for a continuation of the status quo and demands that our best Air Force is given significant autonomy from the Army and reorganize the United States Army Air Force and it works for the U.S. Uh, Army Air Corps to expand and support it to suit the needs of the battlefield. With the High Command being undecided on the issue, the final decision has been sent to the War Department where it has been forwarded to the Secretary of Defense to decide on the matter. Expand the USAC or USAF? Well, this might affect us later on, so let's take a look. That's Army, I come over here, so USAAC, uh, fighter, you get more production for stuff, or we get the Air Force, heavy fighter, strategic bombers, we will probably go to the USAAC. I never use strategic bombers, it isn't single player. In multiplayer, it could be pretty gosh darn effective, especially as America, but, um, cast, I prefer cast, to be honest with you guys, so, we gotta go to the USAAC. And we're not gonna do a focus for now, because I want to see the inauguration first, and we'll have a good time! We got a national focus to select soon. Serbia crowns King Alexander II. King Regent, what's the difference? Who cares? We got America to do. Murrah's inaugural address. The country's social problems have forced the American people to turn to radical solutions. Too tardy. Too, too tardy. The two party system has broken down, and William H. Murray is to be sworn in as the 31st president of the United States, with John E. E. Rankin being sworn in as vice president with the support of the conservative Democrats and the right wing fringe of the Republican Party, just giving him enough support take Congress. In a stirring speech in Washington, D.C., Murr has pledged to defend the interests of the American people and destroy those who would threaten them. Naturally, this has outraged SPA and ODP Slim Coalition in Congress means 
that it may find it challenging to pass meaningful legislation, especially in the Senate, where an assortment of Democratic, Republican, Progressive, and of course, SBA Senators have promised to filibuster any law that seems detrimental to America. God bless America. It's time for President Murray and his right-wing nationalist agenda. There we go, boys and girls. Now we're going to choose. Do we break the bankers? Or do we fight the anarchists? The Socialist Party greatly loses power, or we get a little bit more power. I kind of prefer more power, but let's get cracked in a minute, man. America First Party, National Populism, The Call of Race. Um, well, I don't like the Socialist Party a lot, at all. Really, I want them to be alive to fight off the other factions. Now, if we take them out... Okay, so I've already played this a little bit off-screen. I'll be honest here. So we start off with the Southeast. A good, a massive chunk of the Southeast. Pretty much all of the old Confederacy except for Louisiana and Texas. So we even get parts of Indiana and, like, Kentucky. I don't think we get Southeast Ohio. But, like, the SPA spawns here. So basically, if we take out the SPA, we divide the country in two with us on a two-front war. I don't want them to be too weak. So, I'd rather that we get a little bit stronger. So, let's break the bankers. Has anyone done as much damage as the establishment banking class? It's time to investigate and punish their fraudulent behavior to restore public confidence and bring the justice of the nation to them. While we're working on roads, yes. Florida, come on, please. Please. Georgia, please. Reed and Long reinforced militias in response to Murray's inauguration. Both Jack Reed and Huey Long doubled down in reinforcing the respective militias, seemingly dropping any pretense of not officially being their leaders. Condemning Murray as a threat to democracy, Long demands that he stay clear of AFP territory while Reed all promises future conflict. Traitors to America. Absolute son of a gun traitors. Bankers resist. As the establishment class resists our ability to break up banks and have those in ODP territory controlled by the states, it becomes clear we're going to pass our desired legislation through Congress and executive orders will have to suffice. On the plus side, MERS anti bank activities has increased its popularity with the common people. Fools! And we get more political power? Aw, oh, yeah. I'm not sure that really does too much for us, but I'll, I'll take it. Are we actually losing political power? No, we're barely getting 0.16 every day, huh? Not bad. Hey, maybe we'll get some radio before a potential war gets sparked. Now, when, is it, when do we break, everything break down? Is it. Early March? Early to mid-March or so? I can't remember. A Rockefeller investigated. The oil tycoon John D. Rockefeller has aligned himself with the Republican politics and greed for too long. Now he's paying the price of putting profit among national brotherhood. Employees of Rankin and Forward have found evidence of price fixing and undercutting of competitors. Despite the outcries of his agents, it's time to announce we intend to put him on trial and every congressman's connections to him. Good. Man, can you imagine that actually happens in modern life? That'd be kind of wild. Sheridan? Hello, Sheridan. We'll take you in. Smoke generators? Hey, we actually got that one done. We won't get this one done, though. Depth charge throwers? Why not? Penalizing corrupt. It's obvious that the, the bankers and lobbyists have too much influence in D.C., often working for the good of their own pockets and the people. As such, Murray has announced that he shall dig through every corrupt or working against the ODP to find the crimes they've committed and prosecute them whenever possible. Of course, this announcement has set off a firestorm of hatred among the other parties, but will weaken their corrupt establishment. Very, very good. In which next we could call the race. More national populism and crack the militia? Um, I don't want them to be too bad because they are they will be the buffer between us and the Western Command that's a new nation in Home of the Brave, as well as Pacific Pacific States, but even then I'm not too concerned about them. Um also call of race, because that it would just be as edgy as possible. The last few decades of racial unrest have undoubtedly been fueled by cynical and machine politics rewarding immigrants and minorities for attacking natives. We must reassert white Christian nativism and undermine its opponents with the Smith Act, growing our support in the process. The foundations of the Belgrade Pact? Cool. Expanded Ar United States Army Air Corps. Nice. Congress pro protests. Congress is openly protesting our most recent executive accusing or executive order accusing Murray of being an extremist demagogue. Already the AFP and SPR are mobilizing against us and the establishment appears to be making negotiations with the military to restrain Murray. It appears as though we are being literally forced from office in a short time, although our executive acts has made us even more popular than among those who lean towards us. Traders, trade us all. Well, between ARSP, nice. Actually, how long did that take? That last one, break the bankers? I'm not really sure, but the Smith Act block. Smith Act would have simultaneously end non-white and non-Protestant immigration to the U.S. while reintroducing some form of segregation to the North, including banning whites from marrying Jews and those with a, more or a quarter of black blood. However, the act has virtually no chance of passing Congress as basically only ODP congressmen and a handful of breakaways from their other parties are willing to vote for it, and such an executive order will need to be enacted. They forced her hand. I feel like I'm playing Yaki right now from TNO. Oh boy! There goes re Republican democracy. MacArthur forces out Murray. William H. Murray's time is up as he has fled for the ODP controlled Georgia after hearing of MacArthur's clique planning to coup him. MacArthur has announced that Murray and all other radicals threatening America will have to stand down and allow a return to ordinary democratic politics, basically demanding that all militias disband accept the Constitution. That's the only way. Oh, we can't do our race thing? Oh, man. 
And President Murray declares the Constitutional American Republic the CAR. President Murray is arriving in Atlanta after being warned of MacArthur's coup merely minutes before it happened. In a speech, he blamed financial, Jewish, and leftist machinations against him that MacArthur was a tool of those who wanted to see the U.S. Mongolize, of which the syndicalists and share the wealth are all many simple, useful tools of. He went on to say it was the duty of every American who wanted a future for children to stand against the federal government and their banking elite, ending the speech by saying, Semper sic tyrannis, due to the status as a former United States president, he has gained followers where he otherwise might not have. Now, that's really extremely hard to read, but get to the event. Reach out to the victor, stand by the republic and say, as us, or stand by the nation, play as a car. I like car. I have a car. I have an SUV, actually. Eh, I guess it's an SUV, but I think that's going to end today's episode there after we do a focus. Because I love doing focuses. Let's see. Where are we? So we have one up here, the Alf Alfalfa Bill. This focus will eventually be automatically bypassed when we unlock the other focuses. Well, do we have anything over here that we could do? Uh, let's do the army, maybe. Bonus for land auction. We could use a bonus right now. And the navy and the air force once again. Um, I just want to do this one anyways. Alafa Bill has cemented his hold on the old Democratic Party and since the rise of the Constitutional American Republic and with it has a monopoly executive power invested in him by the party until a successor chosen by the ODP. Long live the old Democrats. Sweet, but that's going to end today's episode right there. If you enjoyed it, while wow, we only have three research thoughts, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. We actually changed our flag if you didn't notice. And I'll see you tomorrow when we figure out how to play as a constitutional American Republic and unfortunately have to go to war with our brethren. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.